Hey YouTubians, Tony here from We Try Anything Channel, Let's Try Anything, so you don't have to. In today's video, we're going to take a look at another watch from the Casio collection, with this one being the Casio FTS 100 Forrester watch, which has a module number of 2147. As usual with the watch reviews that we undertake on the We Try Anything channel, we'll be looking around the Casio FTS 100, highlighting some of the materials used, the design of the watch, and mentioning some of the sizes along the way. We will then go through some of the functions this watch has to offer, pop it on our wrist and say it's like to wear. There will be a link below to the instructions about how to use this watch in a bit more depth. Unfortunately, there won't be an affiliate link to this watch because this watch is uh, what will be a vintage watch in the Casio range, as this watch, I believe, came out in 2005, so it's not listed on Amazon anymore. But you can search Amazon for other um, watches from the Casio range, which I have linked to below. To start things off, the Casio FTS featured here is an eBay purchase and it is worth mentioning this as first of all the strap isn't what you would normally get with this watch because the strap tends to be what would be a black plastic resin affair I tend to buy from eBay as I like to give you an idea of how these watches wear over time and as you can see this watch has worn very well indeed uh, judging by the scratches and war wounds that it has picked up along the way so it's definitely what I would say has been a daily beta watch um, and also, the reason why I buy off eBay, a little bit cheaper sometimes, doesn't always work out that way. But also, you can't get this watch from Amazon, as I've mentioned, nor Argos here in the UK. So it is a watch that tends to be found on second-hand sites or pre-loved sites, uh, which you can find on the internet. Now, please correct me if I'm wrong, but from my understanding, the Casio Forrester range of watches tend to be a low-cost range of watches from Casio that are primarily aimed more at the type of people who love camping, out in the wilderness, hiking, and exploring the great outdoors. And from what you can see, this fairly rugged-looking watch from Casio can help facilitate that. And also, you can get other watches in the Forrester range, which I am showing you here. So it's not just this watch that's on offer. You can get an analog digital or more analog watches, which I believe are available from Amazon, which I've linked to below. So after all of that, let's take a closer look at the Casio F FTS 100 Forrester watch that we have here. This watch is quite a wide watch, as you can see here, with the case being approximately 52 millimeters from the center array here on the left which we'll talk about later, to the extrusion, the extreme extrusion on the right. So it's quite a wide watch. Now, look to look, you are looking at about what would be 51 millimeters. So, yeah, it's quite a tall watch as well. Uh, depth wise, you are looking at about 14 millimeters here, uh, which is from the stainless steel back to what would be the extrusions on the top. I haven't really measured down to the dial window, just the extrusion, just to give you an idea of height there. Now, in terms of materials, you are looking at a black plastic case with various, various extrusions that pop out around the dial. So you've got one for the sensors here and these going on around the main part of the watch. And I would imagine these are to help protect the main dial of this watch but as you can see here it hasn't always protected it the inner bezel again is again plastic and it's just of a slightly con different contrasting color here which is quite nice really it just picks out the watch i mean if it was all black it'd be quite boring really but it does add to that element or that design look of this watch and it also features what would be four plastic pushers which the decals on the inner bezel do refer to now, the case, as I've mentioned, also features a metal face sensor array here, which is built into the left-hand side of the watch, equipping it with two sensors, which are a barometer and an altitude or altimeter, as it were. Now, the inner lug width on this watch is 20 millimeters that go from on the inner there, from there to there. And as I've mentioned towards the start of the video, the strap isn't a standard resin strap that you would have received with this watch. But in, in this instance, it is a nylon affair, or nylon Velcro affair, which I, I don't mind really. Personally, I don't mind it at all. The only thing I do mind is the color. I wish that the person who, who had it before me may have gone with a, a, a a color to complement the inner bezel because I think that would have made it suit the actual look of this watch but again it's not bad so obviously you can dry this um, strap off if it gets wet and also you can get it 
pop, pop it around the, on your wrist and put it on around your loop and it is very easy to put on and also you can get it really tight to your wrist so if you are doing something that is more active or it's swimming or anything like that then you've got no real fear of this falling off so it's, I don't mind it at all I think it's quite nice plus also it is a Casio branded one here so I would imagine the the previous person to me must have got it off another watch or maybe bought it in just to help with the aesthetic of what this watch does uh, or the feet the functionality of this watch but I don't mind it really but just I wish they'd gone with a different a color that complements the inner bezel now looking at the back of the watch you can see it has got the Casio Forrester brand in here which you can see on a lot of the Casio Forrester range of watches uh, you've got your module number here which I, is 2147 and also it does mention that it is a stainless steel back and you've got the four screws as well or retaining screws which when undone allows you inside the actual module of the watch then you can change the battery and also you will notice that it is a Japanese movement uh, I'm not sure on the accuracy of the movement mm, normally it tends to be around the plus and minus 20 seconds a month but again you don't quote me on that but it does also allow the watch to have a water resistance of 100 meters and 10 bar now, moving on to the front of the watch, which you can see here, the dial window has a spherical resin glass. It has scratch. Now, this gives you a good understanding or a good idea how these watches do tend to wear. And as you can see, I mean, I have used PolyWatch on this just to get it off. And I'm sure if I spent a good amount of time, I could probably get it polished out. But it just gives you an idea of how these watches do tend to wear over time and especially with that plastic case as well you can see it does if you do knock it against stuff it will pick up those scratches this watch also features the usual easy to read layout that you would come to expect with a casio and in this instance the decals don't really shout out to you which for example the alti barometer and the forester up here which is quite nice really because it doesn't detract from the look of the watch now talking about the actual display of the watch you have the barometer indicator here and that is on every mode in this watch so that will give you an idea of the air pressure whether it's going up or down which I'll talk about in a bit you also have what would be the segments here so if you're in the barometer mode this will flash if you're in the altimeter mode that will flash and if you are looking at the maximum altitude that this watch has been to which this watch does record it will flash there as well so that gives you an idea of the modes that you're in when you are looking at the two sensor features that this watch has underneath you've got the day the month and the dates within the month underneath you've got what would be the main lcd display which is the fun it's not too hard to read it's quite legible from distance um it's not the biggest ones that casio done if you want a real fairly large display look at the casio w96h or the Casio W800H, they're two very popular watches with a nice, larger, crisp LCD display. Or even if you really need a big display, go for the Casio, I believe it's the AE1500. I mean, that watch is a monster in the display and it's massive. But it's easy to read and there's no real ghosting on the LCD as well. So looking at it from any kind of angle, you can easily get an idea of the time. And talking about the time, this watch also features 12 and 24 hour, which is also known as military time in the United States. So there's quite a few features on this watch. Now, talking about the actual features of this watch, this watch also features uh, a backlit electroluminescent display, which is like a nice blue color. So pressing the like button, you will see that it will display for, I think, a, a mini, sorry, a second and a half. And I am showing you to the right how this watch looks in darkness, stroke semi-darkness. And also, I mean, just try it a few more times just to give you an idea of how the actual uh, backlight looks. And also, if you keep your finger on the like button, you will see it just comes up with auto. So what that means is every time you flip, you, you kind of go from an angle, which I believe it's got to be around the 40 degrees or 45 degrees mark, the backlight will activate. So you don't, don't really have to press the light button as long as act, act, that is activated. You can just flick your wrist and that tends to work. So I'm showing you here again, it doesn't always work. It just depends the angle or what the angle is you're coming from on your wrist but it does give you a fair indication of the time in darkness and you don't have to press that light as we're starting to talk about the watch's features let's look a little closer at what the casio fts 100 has to offer in terms of the two main features which is the altimeter and the barometer so first of all talking about the barometer if you're unsure what a barometer is basically it is an instrument that measures air pressure and the changes of that air pressure. Now the idea of measuring air pressure allows you to get a good idea of the change in weather within your environment. So for example, 
if the barometric pressure increases then you are looking at good weather conditions starting to happen if it starts to decline then that tends to predict that the weather around you will start to deteriorate and it is a handy feature on this watch especially if you are out, out in the outdoors as it were camping or hiking and stuff like that it gives you a good idea whether you're going to start to experience good weather or bad weather now there is a couple of ways of understanding the barometric pressure that is happening around you the first one being is that display now as you can see this display or the the graph is starting to indicate going up so that means that the weather around me is starting to get better as the air pressure is starting to increase and if you look on weather reports and stuff like that they do measure mention about air pressure and obviously if you start to understand the trends within air pressure the better the the higher the air pressure the better the weather the lower the air pressure the the, the worse the weather really and it, as the air pressure starts to go down what you see over time because this watch will measure air pressure every three hours as you can see indicated on the just the decals just underneath the graph um, it will start to decline as time goes by but in this instance as you can see here it is starting to go up which is good now if I flick on the old mode button you will see that it starts to flash and that means that we are in the barometer mode part of the watch and what you can see here you've got still got the time underneath but you have got a value here and a unit of measurement underneath it now this un unit of measurement as you can see here is hpa mb in brackets now that stands for the hpa stands for hectopascal and it is a unit of pressure that can be converted into millibars so for example one hectopascal unit of measurement or air pressure is known as a millibar hence why you've got the mb in brackets so in this instance it's 994 or 994 millibars now you can change that so it's it measures it in a different unit of measurement so in the for example in the united states it will be something else which is i believe it's known as an inch of mercury or what is inh g so you do that by just pressing the adjust button and what that does it gives you another readout of what would be the millibar pressure that we've got here in the UK. If I press mode, you can see it's converted into what would be an inch of mercury or INHG. And that is used for weather reports in the United States or aviation and stuff like that, where air pressure is measured. So I'll just pop that back to what would be millibars. And there you go. That is the other way of measuring air pressure. So obviously as that goes up, uh, you know that the weather's gonna be good. As it goes down, the weather's gonna be bad. And you can also measure the difference in air pressure over a certain amount of time by keeping it on the uh, what would be the barometer screen pressing start stop and what that allows you to do uh, in the elapsed time it will give you an indicator of the difference in air pressure so obviously there's not much happened here because i've just set it off but you can see the air pressure is starting to go up by one at the minute but over time it's gone back down to naught i mean obviously this is film within a room i would imagine if you're out and about you might get more variance in what would be the millibar air pressure that is being measured with the elapsed time going on here now i believe the elapsed time will go up to 24 hours so you can measure a day's worth of air pressure changes that are going on around you which is a very handy feature if you are into seeing how the weather changes with the air pressure that is being measured so it's nice really so i'll just cancel that off and then what i'm going to do i'm going to show you the next mode which is the altimeter so I just press it go through the modes again and as you get again as you can see you've got the altimeter here and at the minute it is measuring in feet so I am approximately about 540 feet above sea level now again like I've shown you with the barometer you can change that to meters as well by just pressing the adjust button and again it starts to it's looking to read uh, what would be the altitude of where this watch is situated at and it's gone up to 540 but if you press uh, the mode button you can read meters and you can go back to feet as well and also this watch will uh, give you an idea of the maximum altitude that this watch has been at with the obviously the per person wearing it and in this instance it's been 1320 feet and again it's not accurate it is based on uh, air pressure and stuff like that and uh, obviously what I've written reading the instructions for this watch if the air pressure does change fairly dramatically around you or quite quickly then that does affect what would be the altimeter reading as well so just bear that in mind it's not 100 percent accurate but you can calibrate these watches as well and like i've shown you with the uh, barometer you can also measure 
the um, changes in elevation over an elapsed amount of time. So again, handy if you get oriented, well, handy if you're going up hills or if you're in the lakes and you're going up hills like Scarfell Pike and stuff like that, you can see the difference in the altitude that you're going from and you're going to. And that's it, that's the two main features of this watch, which are really handy if you're out and about camping and stuff like that. Now the other two functions that this watch has, which is fairly standard to what would be Casio, it has a daily alarm, so once you set it, it'll go off every day at half seven that I've got here in the morning. And also you can turn that on, and then you can also turn it off. And also you will get, which, which you see by the words, uh, letters SIG, it has an hourly signal as well. So it'll go off on the hour, every hour while it's activated. And I'll just turn it off and it's as easily done as that. And if I press mode again, you can go through to what is the stopwatch. And it is a fairly simple stopwatch. It doesn't have a memory bank of times that you can record. It's just elapsed time, it measures split time, and it also measures first and second times. And also it will measure up to an elapsed time up to 24 hours. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pop this watch on my wrist and say it's live to wear. Now here it is on the wrist, and I'm gonna say, yeah, it's, it's not too bad really. I mean, the, the actual strap, I believe, uh, it'd be interesting to see what it'd be like with the original strap but on this strap it's i can't really comment on how tight it is to my wrist because at the end of the day i can adjust it very minutely just to get it perfect to my wrist and that's what i've done here now in terms of hand movement it is a wide watch so you can feel that extrusion just poking out a little there and it doesn't really inhibit it but you you, you know it's there but i would imagine you get used to it over a certain amount of time but in terms of looks very rugged looking, uh, very, I, I've got to say, I quite like the, the overall aesthetic of this watch. If only the strap was that colour, as I've mentioned earlier, it would add 100% to the way this watch looks. But other than that, yeah, it's a, the usual Casio affair where it's easily read. There's no ghosting just to take it away from the way the watch looks. It is a very nice looking watch. As I say, it works, it, it fits well on the wrist, it's comfortable. But again, I'm, I'm not, I don't know how much that this nylon velcro strap is adding to that comfort really so just bear that in mind if you are looking at the original part of this watch i can't really comment on what it would be like with the original strap but otherwise yeah good comfortable watch wears well um a little bit of uh, restriction in the hand movement not a massive amount but just a little bit but it looks good on the wrist i've got to say it works really well and yeah that time is very easy to read at a distance and at an angle as well so that's a good positive plus for this watch now overall I like the Casio FTS 100. Um, it has a very useful feature set, especially if you are more of an outdoorsy person. But you just need to remember that obviously the materials that make up this watch, it will scratch. This, the actual crystal will scratch as well. So if that's something that puts you off getting a watch like this, then maybe look elsewhere or maybe spend a bit more money really and get something that's mineral or <laughs> really if you want to go top tier sapphire. But as I say, wears, wears well on the wrist. It's easy to use, understand, especially with that graph here, giving you an idea of barometric pressure and stuff like that to give you an idea of the weather is bound to change and stuff like that. And it is for a vintage watch. It's got a nice little feature set going on. And if you are in the market for something like a vintage digital watch that has a little bit more than the usual alarm and stuff like that, then maybe give the Casio FTS 100 a try. And as I say, it will be an interesting watch to add to your collection. So I hope you liked the review of the Casio FTS 100. And if you did, then give it a like, always helps the channel. And if you wanna see more videos from the Weetra Anything channel, then click on the subscription button below, it always helps. And thank you for watching the review on the Casio FTS 100. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.